Hello, I'm Dante from Low Mana and welcome to another Lore Watch. Today we'll be looking into a remnant of the Omnic Crisis, the last of its kind, Bastion. Years before Overwatch was conceived, before the Omnic Crisis ravaged the world, society looked much as it does now. The divide between rich and poor was as persistent as ever, but a new company appeared purporting to have the answer. Called Omnica Corporation, they pioneered brand new methods of robotic manufacturing, using revolutionary self-improving software algorithms in their automation process. These were so impressive that it appeared they would usher in a new golden age, erasing the old inequalities in one fell swoop. Accordingly, the massive factories known as Omniums that were required were built in every continent around the globe. Thousands of AI-driven automations began pouring out of the factory doors across the world, designed for purposes as varied as household tasks, manual labour, skyscraper construction and global peacekeeping. As is often the case, however, the reality could not live up to the initial promise. The Omniums began to break down. Analysts swiftly discovered that they would never have been able to fulfil the guarantees offered by Omnica. Investigations into the company, their claims, finances and business model ensued, and the inevitable charge of fraud swiftly followed. Having started with such fanfare, Omnica was forcibly dissolved, their giant Omniums left in a state of disrepair, deactivated and slowly being dismantled, a symbol of the failed experiment that promised so much. The rest of the world began to return to normality. The Omnics that had been built continued to fulfil their functions, while the company that built them slowly slipped into the pages of history. Nobody was prepared for what happened next. Without warning, the dormant Omniums awoke, irrespective of how damaged or dismantled they had become. They rapidly churned back into production, and inexplicably began to wage war against the entirety of humanity. Even though they were caught unaware and unprepared, the nations of the world believed they would be capable of dealing with the threat. But they had not counted on the power of the self-improving AI inherent in the Omnics. With no warning, no demands, and seemingly no reason for their sudden onslaught, the Omnic Crisis had begun. Even though the goal was straightforward, no country was able to muster the strength to control their own lands, let alone destroy the nearest Omnium. The colossal factories continued to pump out combat units at prodigious rates, but that was not the only source of their power. Older Omnics, built before the scandal that brought down Omnica, turned on their human masters along with enhanced AI robots built or designed by other corporations. Most notable were the Titans, giant walkers designed for large building work, and above all else, the seemingly endless ranks of Bastion units, designed by SST laboratories to assist in global peacekeeping. These bots possessed the ability to rapidly reconfigure into a deadly assault cannon. These original Bastions were bolstered by the huge numbers pouring out of Omniums, and would come to form the bulk of the Omnium forces, and the symbol that defined the horror of the crisis. Battles raged across the globe, each nation fighting for and by itself, while traditional military forces were typically decimated by the Omnic Hordes. The more specialised and tactically unique units began to have some level of success. From the mobile sniper teams of Egypt, the enhanced soldiers of the US, through to the Honourable Crusaders of Germany. It would be these Crusaders that would have the biggest impact on one of the few Bastion units to survive the war. In the early days of the crisis, a huge Omnic force pushed towards Stuttgart in the southwest of Germany, though a large contingent of the German army met them in hopes of protecting the city. In reality, they were no match for the Titans, dropships, walkers and the bastions before them. The fighting also encompassed the small town of Eichenwald, birthplace of General Balderich von Adler, leader of the Crusaders. As his men reinforced the main German lines, Balderich led a handful of Crusaders deep into Eichenwald in an attempt to outflank the Omnics and help change the course of the battle. The raw power of the Crusaders was enough to smash through the robotic rearguard, providing enough inspiration, dedication and distraction to ultimately allow the German forces to win the day. Victory did not come without cost, however. To this day, Eichenwald lies in ruins, its streets abandoned, empty husks of the Omnic aggressors scattered throughout its winding cobbled pavements and littering the surrounding forest floor. The corpse of Balderic himself is the lone remaining sign of the Crusaders' heroism that day, his power armour sitting slumped in the throne of the great castle he called home. Not all relics of the Battle of Eichenwald lie in ruins, however. Unbeknownst to the world, one lone bastion unit survived. Deactivated by unknown means but still very much intact, this feared symbol of war sat idle for decades, 
Undiscovered even as the crisis ended, its fellow bastions were destroyed and the world slowly recovered. Years passed as the world turned. Overwatch rose to inspire humanity into new heights, bringing about a golden age before an ignominious fall, and all the while the undergrowth slowly covered the lone bastion in the deep quiet of the Black Forest. Wildlife slowly began to follow where the plants had already established themselves, until one day where a small yellow bird, Ganymede, began to build a nest on the right shoulder of the deactivated Omnic. Inquisitive, Ganymede caught sight of the small portion of the Bastion unit's eyes that was not yet covered by moss and began to peck at it. Despite many years of dormancy, for some reason this was enough to rouse Bastion from its long slumber. Decades of earth and flora fell away as long unused servos slowly whirred back into life, and the long darkened eye flashed bright with brilliant blue. Remarkably, all systems had survived unscathed through the unexplained hibernation, and within seconds of waking up, Bastion's targeting computers set a path for Stuttgart. Something had changed during the long sleep though, whether due to the self-improving nature of the Omnic tech, or simply happy accident. Bastion began to notice and appreciate the beauty of the forest around it. From the light cascading through the canopy, the pouring rain on the foliage, through to the creatures around it, Bastion did not take a straight line to Stuttgart, these new impulses causing it to stop and wonder at its surroundings. With Ganymede's nest still on its shoulder, the bird became its companion, but the psyche of an Omnic proved to be as vulnerable as a human's. Triggered by an ardent woodpecker, the sound eerily similar to gunfire the forest echoed with decades before, Bastion's combat program kicked in. Shifting to its sentry form, it sprayed the dense woodland with a hail of bullets, firing indiscriminately into the brush. Wildlife scattered, and even though it quickly regained control, Bastion found that Ganymede had gone, his nest lie broken from the act of destruction. Alone, Bastion once again set course for Stuttgart. Eventually, the forest gave way to a vast grassland, the spires of the city rising high in the horizon. The tall grass, however, hid the true nature of this plain. As it stepped forward, Bastion realized it had found the heart of the Battle of Eichenwald. Ruined fellow mechs littered the land around it, destroyed by crusaders or gunfire years ago. And upon accessing the damaged memory circuits of one unit, Bastion once again witnessed the colossal battle firsthand. As the images roared through it, the deeply ingrained combat protocols reasserted themselves, and gun raised, Bastion marched onwards to Stuttgart. Ganymede had not abandoned the Omnic, however, and with stick and song, landed on the outstretched firearm. Somehow, the sight of the happy and inquisitive little bird stopped Bastion in its tracks, and slowly, but surely, overrode the core aggressive programming. Placing the stick carefully on its shoulder, the Omnic War Machine turned its back on the human city before it, and with Ganymede at its side, strode back into the forest. Bastion now roams the wild parts of the world, avoiding human contact due to both the fear it inspires and the ever-present possibility of conflict. The war long over, it searches for a purpose in the world, and with tensions heightening and chaos brewing in the world over, it seems likely it will be called into service once again. Thanks for watching this episode of Law Watch. Where do you think Bastion will end up in this seemingly inevitable conflict to come? You can catch up with our last episode on Sombra or check one of our other vids here. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button and if you want to see more, please subscribe. I've been Dante and until next time, thanks for watching.